exactly the right spot when the tide goes out. Cylindrical targets bounce laser beams back to the barge so the computer knows its precise location. It's called dynamic positioning. When we're relying upon the navigation systems on the SAR-3, uh, the heavy lift cranes on the laser A, the dynamic positioning system to hold us in place whilst we take the lift, all these factors in themselves are crucial to the operation, so have to be treated with exactly the same care every time we do it. OK, physically now we're still in manual. Um, we're going to drive the barge ahead into the gap here. And uh, when we're in position nicely in the middle between these two caissons here, we'll um, set the laser going and, and start it uh, stabilising and, and sitting on the laser. The barge is still moving. On a DP system, it will not hold itself right on the spot. She wanders within half a metre. It always works out. As we start to lower, it seems to move. Barge is moving about a little bit at the moment, but uh, we'll wait for it to come back and then catch it on the way back. Dave is responsible for this caisson's safe journey from shore to riverbed, but he can't lower the crane until the barge is stable. And that depends on Martin. So we've moved off, and the computer now is saying, OK, there is a force acting on me. I know I have to act against it. It's putting power on the engines here. And you can see in this case, it's actually putting power on the back engines, which are now pushing quite hard ahead, using about half power. The two forward engines are doing very little, except just slightly um, fluttering to keep the, the heading right. And it'll keep doing this in a decreasing spiral until after two or three minutes, we'll be quite stable. <laughs> I'd like to get him to, to, get him to drop back on it and lower. When, when the actual lifting frame looks in the right position and you feel that the barge is stable, and over the last two years we gained this experience quite well, and uh, we tend to look at it and think, well, it feels right, let's go for it. No, it's looking good. It's well away from the casing. Yeah, so there's no problem. We'll have to jib it out. Quick in, is it? Yep, ready, Larry, for him. Is low enough? No, not yet. Yeah. Low enough, yes. Right. Go on, Larry, give it up. Close the legs. Close the legs. Close the legs, Kev. Close the legs. took a pulse reading there, you'll probably find the heart of gold in the way. I can feel it trembling. It's when you lift, um, Dave. I'll tell you, it's, it's when you lift off that you see how this barge behaves Boots, yeah. in the uh, dynamic position. Very much of a dynamic position. Dynamic position, position, it, position rotating yeah. about um, the small circle. It's surprising that we've moved probably two and a half metres off of our position. Right. The SAR 3. But it's still a very, very good lift off. We didn't get much movement when we lifted it. Yeah. On various jobs over the last 20, 25 years, we've worked together off and on. Um, I've been with him and I've left him and I've come back to him. And, uh, and probably he'll go on for another 10 years yet before we decide to part and I'll retire out of it. But uh, yes, it's been quite a team. The job requires total dedication. The results of that will be there long after the engineers have gone. Uh, I know it doesn't appeal to a lot of people, and certainly there are a number of drawbacks, particularly those which affect family. When you've uh, got children's education to think about, you're dragging your wife around, not just the country, but in my case, around various parts of the world as well. Um, however, the sort of thing that you see going on today compensates for those drawbacks very much, and uh, I'm pleased to, uh, to be able to say that my family feel part of it as well. The River Severn has the second highest tidal rise and fall in the world at up to 40 feet, and one low tide in late November saw the last caisson lowered into place. Last one, that's it. Biggest problem today is the pumps backed up on us, which we've done all the others and the pumps work very well. This one, 
it's gone down on us. But we will make it. I feel relieved that uh, we've put 37 in and we've had no major problems with them. Um, and in the heart, I feel as though, you know, it's the end of a, a session that uh, could have gone on a little bit longer. We're just getting it right. <laughs> to some extent, it's also a sub time because people can see um, the bridge taking shape now and despite all these achievements, um, can see perhaps the end is in sight. We still have a lot of work to do here during 1995. Uh, the pressure is going to be really on in order for us to uh, close the physical link across the bridge um, hopefully by the end of 1995, which will leave a period of a few months in 1996 to complete the finishing work, the surfacing and so on. They may be halfway across, but it will be spring 1996 before the bridge is finished. At least another 15 months of fighting the elements in the River Severn. A few weeks ago, we had a lot of wind on a 14-metre tide, and it called us all out. A wind with the tide, and we lost a lot of small plant and scaffold boards come off the job, which we wasn't expecting, but it called us out. Uh, people say it gets easier. Yes, it does get easier because we all get more experience at it, but there is still a hell of a challenge there to do each operation. 